Hey, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Chainlink. I do want to say that I'm not a financial advisor. You should do your own research before investing money into crypto. If you haven't seen the previous update, I encourage you to watch that before watching this one so that you have more context. It's going to be linked in the top right hand corner of this video. Also, I have two donation links down below in the description. If you want to support the Ukrainian refugees, feel free to donate to or through the funds, I should say. But obviously, we all have our financial situations. If you're not able to do it, that's totally fine. Thank you all for supporting the channel. Let's get on with the video. So we are currently on the daily chart. As you can see, we have a large Fibonacci retracement here. I'm going to show you the swing low and the swing high of the retracement. So if I just take an arrow, so that is our swing low that we printed in July of 2021. And that is the swing high that we printed in November last year. Our technical target was the 1.618 at $5.61. And we have met that perfectly three times here. And right now we're having a nice uptrend to the upside. Well, uptrend to the upside. We have an uptrend and we're going to take a look at some targets with the potential staking being announced this month. Uh, this month for Chainlink, we could see a nice appreciation in the price. So zooming in, you can see that we were in this channel down pattern. And right now we are coming back into the channel up pattern. We had a little fake out below it over here at the end of August. But now we have come back into the pattern. And if we take a look at the end of September, potentially closer to the 26th, you can see that we have a resistance of the channel up pattern of the yellow one. And we have the 1.272 Fibonacci retracement based on this smaller Fib that we have. I'm just going to remove the larger one so that it's not that uh, distracting. So we have a target here at $10.66. Now, for me, this would be a nice place to take a bit of profits before buying back in, let's say at $9.5. Because uh, with the announcement of staking, we can obviously see a nice appreciation and a nice pump. People are just going to start buying up and staking uh, their link, which is going to help the price surge. And we have seen Chainlink do well in bear markets before. So this one could be no exception potentially. So yeah, if you're going to be swing trading, just be careful. If we start a parabolic move to the upside, you don't want to be left hanging with your cash down here while the price continues to surge. So just be careful with your swing trades. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not a financial advisor by any means, but if you want to get all of my trade alerts, my low cap gems, and if you want to leave your suggestions, then feel free to check out Patreon down below in the description. I have also started uh, a podcast series over there. So just 30 minutes of background noise for you guys while you're doing something. And yeah, feel free to check out the link in the description. Now moving over to the Fibonacci retracement, as you can see, we're running into the golden ratio of this smaller fib. And the golden ratio here is sitting at $8.06. And as you can see, we're failing to break through that. And this level has been a resistance previously. So here, July 30th, we did get rejected from there and we went all the way back down to the 20 EMA and from there we got overextended. Potentially we could see a similar scenario where we come back down to the 20 EMA here and then we have another push and we get to $9.49 at least. Now if we break $9.49 which is the swing high of this smaller fib retracement, we're going to be targeting $12.35 over here because that's the 1.618. And I would say it is very possible that we do reach that price because with the announcement of staking, you know, we could see a pretty parabolic move. But don't get your hopes up too much. The market is very bearish as of now. These little relief rallies are meant to have people open as many long positions as possible so that they can liquidate them. So don't fall into that trap. I would advise only trading on spot and only buying for the long term. If you are, you know, comfortable with swing trading, then feel free to do so. I personally swing trade only when I see an asset overbought, then I take profits and I buy back in lower once we see a pullback. Obviously, with the 20 EMA here and the 55 potentially creating a bullish cross, this would be a strong, strong sign that we're potentially going to see another move towards $9.50, just like we saw a bullish cross here occur on August 6th. Since then, we did see a nice appreciation all the way up to $9.50. So look out for this bullish cross. Hopefully we do not get an EMA squeeze. 
which is when the yellow EMA bounces off the 55 and comes back down, right? So something like that could happen. You don't want to see that happen. And that would happen only if we started dropping right now. And we could drop, guys. We have the FOMC meeting happening in the um, on, on September 20th or 21st, I think. Then we have the merge for Ethereum, which could also see us drop. Um, and we could also see a drop after we get the inflation data. So yeah, just be wary of those events and have some you know, cash ready to buy the dip. That's what I'm doing at least. So that's regarding the resistance here. If we manage to break the golden ratio, that would be great. And a back test of that would be even better. And then our next target is going to be the 786 at $8.66. And then the first FIB level, like we mentioned before, at $9.49. After that, you have the 1.272 at $10.66. And I think that would be the likely target if we actually start pumping, because if we break this resistance, I wouldn't be so sure we are going to get to the 1.618, so I'd be just more conservative and go for the 1.272. And that would be great because we're going to be creating a higher high. And once we come back down, we could create a lower low, or I should say a higher low. Even if we come back to the golden ratio here, we're still going to be higher than this low that we printed in, uh, in, in uh, at the end of August. So that's regarding the, the charts and the resistance levels that I have for you. I'm going to bring back the large fib and we're going to jump into the daily rsi here so as you can see we're breaking through a couple of resistance trend lines here we bounce from the white trend line here for the second time the first time was back in may so if we see another pullback i would target this white trend line for entries because every time we bounced off that trend line we saw a move to the upside just like we're seeing a move to the upside right now above us we have a couple of yellow resistance trend lines we're breaking through both of them at the moment as you can see, the upper one had two touches previously, then a fake out over here, actually two fake outs. And right now, it seems like we're trying to break above it. But if we have a nice back test of support, that would be great. So if you're buying a uh, chain link for the long term, even right now is a good dollar cost average opportunity. I would be buying in right now, but I am waiting for other altcoins to drop down a little because I'm dollar cost averaging into several altcoins. Like I said, if you want to get my trade alerts, check out Patreon linked down below. And that's regarding the daily RSI. Watch out for this resistance trend line over here that we have bounced from a couple of times at 67.95. So we could see a, re a rejection from that level. And obviously, if we get above the index of 70 and we start getting overbought and overextended here, those would be good times to start taking profits because once you're in here, you are pretty much have nowhere else to go but down. So that's regarding the daily RSI. Let's switch over to the Binance website. Okay, moving over to the weekly chart for Binance. I want to jump into the weekly RSI here. As you can see, we do have or we were in this falling wedge, which is a beautiful falling wedge. It played out perfectly. We're starting to break out of it. We had a nice back test of support here. And right now we're on our way. So I did tell you that this would be a good entry point, right? Potentially, if we see another um, capitulation in the markets, you could drop down all the way down to this support. Once again, you could drop down even into the falling wedge and come and come down and retest the lower support of the falling wedge. But so far, so good. You're going to have multiple resistance levels from now on. And a resistance level that I have my eyes on right now would be over here. So as you can see, we've bounced from that resistance twice in the past couple of months. Uh, let me just change the color of that trend line just so it stands out a little bit. So this red trend line is something that I'm going to be keeping my eye on. If we manage to get up to that level, maybe you could take some profits. But in all honesty, with a potential announcement for Chainlink staking, I would be careful and I wouldn't really be trying to sell Chainlink before it starts getting uh, overbought. So this is just a level to keep an eye on, guys. And that's regarding the weekly chart. And yeah, keep in mind, this is the weekly, so it's going to take some time to get to that red resistance trend line. But if you see the trend line broken and we're, you know, in a parabolic parabola move, basically like this, something like this, then you could take some profits here because, uh, you know, if you're going vertical, then at some point you're going to see a strong pullback. That's just how things work. That's just the nature of uh, the markets. Also, the stochastic is forming a bullish cross here, so potentially we could see a reversal to the upside. Keep that in mind and we'll look out for us getting overbought here. But also keep in mind that the stochastic RSI 
has the, or not has, but the stochastic is really used for mid-term trading while the RSI is for more long-term trading. So here I have the length set up to 28 rather than the default 14. That's why my stochastic might look a little bit different to yours. Now, regarding the MACD, just like last year, we had a nice bullish cross in August. And as you can see, we are getting overextended to the upside, just like we were over here. So potentially we're looking for a nice move going into November 2022. We could see a nice, uh, a nice relief rally for crypto, a nice rally in general for uh, the markets, but it all depends on the news that we're getting. If we're going to get some regulatory crackdowns on crypto and we're going to have some more FUD thrown in with companies being bankrupt, that could definitely drive the prices down and suppress the relief rally. But so far, so good. Chainlink has the potential to go up to, I would say, $15 getting closer to the end of the year. But we'll have to wait and see how it all goes down. Um, stay tuned on the channel. We're going to trade all of this together. But as you can see, if you just zoom out and, you know, this is a good time to take profits, this is a good time to buy. So don't really be selling here. That wouldn't be smart unless you're swing trading and you know what you're doing. So that's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching. If I missed anything out on the charts, please let me know down below in the comment section. Feel free to follow me on Twitter and feel free to join my Patreon. I'm going to catch you in the next one. Goodbye and good night.